right now I'm shooting um, on a Sony A6300 into a Magewell HDMI. It's creating uh, H.264 video pretty much as the camera would produce. Um, and it's a great look, I think. It's amazing. Um, so you can get really great looks when you dial your um, exposure, when you get good lighting, which I, I think I have. Um, again, it's a great image. And so many people say, well, why shoot raw? Or you're shooting raw and it's not that much better and you're just, you're just kidding yourself. Um, and you can get a beautiful image with this. Don't, don't fuss with all this like fancy stuff. You don't need like a $5,000 camera or to get that look through raw, you know. And I, I wanna point out that many of these people have a misconception about why many people shoot raw. It isn't to do that. I mean, yes, obviously you wanna do that. So when you load Magic Lantern, you, you wanna see, hey, can I get this, how close to this camera can I get to an Ari, right? How close to a red? So. Yeah, everybody's gonna try it. It's fun, but that's not really, at least for me, it's not why I shoot in RAW. I shoot for a different reason. When a camera shoots um, uh, its native video, as it's doing here, it's constantly cleaning up the image. It's taking all the pixels and say, you get in line, you know, you're too far out, bring you down. It, it's There's noise reduction. Uh, it does stuff with the, the colors where it tries to even them out. You know, again, all stuff that makes for a beautiful image. But the stuff it throws out or it doesn't, um, it, uh, it doesn't make it to the image is stuff that some people like. It's, it's a certain type of a look. So when you're shooting Magic Lantern RAW, what's happening is the, the software is basically telling the camera, don't take what's coming from each pixel on the sensor, from your millions of pixels. Don't do anything to them. Don't, don't try and get them in line. Don't try and clean it up. Just store it right to the memory card. So each pixel will see some light and get stored to the memory card. Now what that means is that many of the pixels, when they do see uh, whatever they're seeing, they don't have enough light to see it correctly. Or for whatever reason, they just can't get it. And this is true back in the film days. In the film days, you know, that's what that's what grain really is. Now, if, if film back in the celluloid days, if it's properly exposed, you get a completely saturated image. But if it's not, you get grain because the chemical grains didn't really get enough light to, to activate one way or the other. That's the same thing in digital. So when you're shooting raw, you're getting each pixel and the pixels are all, all off in an organic way. So yeah, you can take, I could take this video and I could add like a film grain look and I could do all kinds of things to roughen up the image, but it'll never match the organic look of each pixel actually struggling in real life because some will struggle more, some will struggle less, but all organic to what they're seeing. When you put over a like a film grain look onto like a video in post production, you're just you're giving the same treatment to all the pixels, right? That's not organic, that's artificial. So with raw, you get that organic like you know, pixel sort of seeing of the image. And so like each frame you'll notice is like a slight jumpiness, just like in film. So like in film, each frame like one, you know, the pixel at one point in time, I said, yeah, yeah, that's a red, right? And then a frame later, like, oh, I'm not sure. I think it's a pink, right? And the next frame, oh, no, I think it's a red, right? So it goes, each frame goes back and forth. Each pixel, you know, uh, guessing in a slightly different way what it's seeing. And that's what you get with raw video, just like in film. It's a look. And it's organic. Um, you either like it or you don't like it. But um, you can't, I don't feel there's any argument against it. I mean, you can't say all you can get as good as yeah, with in-camera video because you can't. I can't at least. Um, now, yes, you could do it and you know, you show a normal, like your wife or spouse or any normal person, they're probably like, eh, looks the same to me. But if you're into it, if you're into it, like I'm into it, you, you just need to see a difference. And that's why you shoot it. Again, it's not good, bad, whatever. It's just to your, whatever you want to get, whatever you want to shoot. So I'm gonna actually shoot some of this on the on the Canon 7D in RAW, and um, you can see some of the difference. Uh, well, you'll see if you'll see a difference just shooting in this way with this camera, and then I'll show you a bunch of video um, that I've shot over the past week with this um, SL1. Okay, so now I'm talking to the Canon 7D running Magic Lantern RAW. And it looks like garbage. All right, so, well, this is a perfect case in point about RAW. So I just shot some with the um, 
uh, where is it? Uh, with the pancake lens, but didn't really look very good to me. Um, also, the exposure was a little bit off, so I put the ISO back down to 200. My eyes look in focus. I believe my eyes are in focus. Um, and so, yeah, I mean, it's very easy. Raw does not save you. It's very easy to get a very crappy image from it. <laughs> uh, so hopefully this is a lot better. Um, I put on the Sigma 17 to 50 2.8. I love this lens. It's an old lens. If you ever see one on Craigslist, I really advise that you pick it up. Uh, so again, I keep looking to see if I'm in focus and everything uh, and how the lighting looks. So uh, again, I'm going to now show you a bunch of uh, clips that I shot with the... Um, with the SL1. Now look, see, it's not going to like autofocus like the Sony. <laughs> I'd have to just reach over and uh, do the focus this way. Right? And this camera I got for $185, 240 with the lens. Um, and again, I shoot it for the, to get this grainy uh, natural film look, not because it's uh, as good as the Black Magic 4K cinema camera or something like that. Okay, so uh, I'm going to take this uh, video and put it in the processor, and uh, hopefully uh, you'll see more of that, that grainy. Well, I don't really think you'd see the grainy look in this circumstance. It's not as, um, you know, you have controlled lighting and everything like that. But who knows? You know, maybe. Well, I think you will see it. I mean, the skin tones are another area where raw, uh, I, it's just more natural. I don't know how to explain it. It's um, in-camera video. It's nice, but it's smoother. Um, Whereas, like, if you, like, you look on the forehead and stuff like that, or in the face, with raw video, again, because you're getting pixel to pixel, you get much more nuance. Uh, so if you're really, like, a, if you're really very specific about skin tone, uh, again, anybody who says raw isn't, uh, doesn't give you more latitude to, to set it exactly the way you like it, that's crazy. I mean, it's impossible to do it with um, within camera video. And then... The log profiles, which is, you know, I rant about. If you don't know, I do rant about them because they do not fix it. They actually take color away from the image. Oh, I'm getting a rant again. So anyway, enough. So here too, so I took VLC and I just ran the video um, from the Sony camera and then from the 7D RAW converted into uh, uncompressed uh, AVI. Uh, and I want to show you something. So here's the, let's start with this, sorry. Let's start with the Sony uh, picture. So, um, again, it looks very nice, but if we uh, count the colors here, um, we're going to count 50,000 colors, essentially. So it's 50,000 colors coming from the Sony with the camera, again, like I said, is processing all the pixels um, before it creates each frame of the image. Um, and notice how this compared to the 7D is, seems a little bit more desaturated whereas this seems more contrasting, and saturated. Uh, this because, well, believe it or not, this can easy, very easily look like this. This cannot look like this, and um, I'll show you why. Um, though you, you, like much of the stuff, you, you should test this stuff for yourself, for you to see what works when you're creating your images. Um, okay, so where are we? Uh, sorry. So I want to go into colors, count colors, 80,000, 81, 82,000 colors. So it's 82,000 colors in this, and it's 50,000 in this. Again, like I said, the the camera will uh, clean everything up for you. Uh, when you shoot raw, it doesn't. So you're getting all those little bitty colors. So probably if we, you know, if we zoom in here, uh, can I zoom in here? Uh, yeah, zoom. So let's just say a zoom, you know, 500%. You're going to see um, more noise. Uh, here, that again, as the frames go by, are going to look organic. Uh, if we go in here and we uh, zoom in, you see how much cleaner that is compared to the other one? Okay, so um, again, I just want to quickly show you uh, the differences. Uh, and again, I don't really like these things. You really, again, need to do this for yourself to see for yourself because. Um, you know, I would be like, ah, no, you can, this is whatever, you can get it like this, you can get this like that. Well, you have to try for yourself.